from the Tie Cats Audio Network. This is Tie Cats Today with Braden Neville. Hello and welcome to this episode of Tie Cats Today here on the Tie Cats Audio Network. I'm Braden Neville with you on this Monday, June the 12th, 2023. Today's show, we will be recapping the Tie Cats loss to the Blue Bombers, and joining us for that will be Coach Sal as we go over what he saw from that game on Friday night. And honestly, the game on Friday night, the first half wasn't great. We all know that. After watching that first half, I wasn't sure if there was going to be much of a game to watch, but the Tie Cats seemed like they quickly found their rhythm a bit in that second half and made it very interesting. However, eventually still falling 42 to 31. Lots of positives to take out of that game, some negatives to take out of that game. It's the first week of the season. I don't think we should be ringing the alarm on a loss in week one, especially against a team like the Winnipeg Blue Bombers who have gone to three straight Grey Cups. Bo Levi Mitchell, he made his debut going 17 for 33 with 197 passing yards, one touchdown pass, and two interceptions. His second half was much better than his first half, much like the rest of the team, and they even nearly came back from that heavy deficit to tie the game. And I spoke to him following Friday's game. Tough first half there, but it seemed like you guys were rejuvenated in that second half. What started to to click there on the offense? Uh, I mean, I think I think we just built off what defense and special teams did. I mean, I think you know, um, yeah, we we put some some things together. I mean, we just started seeing things the same and. Um, you know, I started hitting the passes, um, you know, missed way too many in the first half there, you know, things that we've been hitting a lot in practice. So, um, you know, I'll go look at it. Things mainly just feet, but, um, you know, really the special teams and defense really, really turned it up there. You know, it's e- easy to build up that momentum turnovers, touchdowns. I mean, um, you know, I think, oh, challenged us, in the, uh, you know, halftime and just said, you know, it's not good enough. We're not a good football team right now. We got to find a way to get better, um, you know, do it from one another and guys went out there and did it. Getting to play a full game with Tim White and Duke Williams, you guys, they were clicking with you there in that second half too. What did you notice about getting a full one in with them? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, they're, they're vets, they're guys, they understand the game, they see the game. Um, you know, Duke really had some really good adjustments on coverage and what he saw and just kind of me and him being on the same page on seeing some things. Um, and Tim, you know, me and Tim have, have hit a bunch of big plays, you know, over and over in training camp and today just, you know, either a step ahead or a step behind. Um, you know, so we'll figure that out. Hopefully, you know, he's all right after that touchdown catch, but obviously an amazing catch there. Um, you know, I think the one thing I see is we have the pieces. You know, I know I know we took some hits tonight. We got some guys that are down, so we'll have to see, um, you know, what that's looking like health-wise. But um, from those two guys, I, I saw, you know, exactly what I expected to see. Leadership uh, with the other guys. Duke was communicating well, uh, making sure guys were lined up. You know, Terry had a good game. but could have had a bigger game if I'd have hit him on that go route. Um, so again, there was all the guys that had, had the things there. Just, we just got to hit stuff. That was Bo Levi Mitchell following the game on Friday. We will talk more about his game with coach Sal and lots more in just a bit. But first coach O spoke to me after Friday's game to discuss his thoughts on that season opener. You guys seem to come alive there in the second half. Uh, what did you notice change there in that second half for you guys? We just made plays. You know, we were able to special teams. We were able to make some plays. And uh, obviously, we got the offense down there where they could punch it in. Uh, the momentum shifted there for a little bit. We took full advantage of it. And, uh, you know, up until the end, I thought uh, that we were going to go down and try to tie that thing up. So, yeah, proud of the grit. But uh, we, we didn't do enough early to, to, uh, to have that opportunity. What was the message maybe to the guys that seemed like they kind of came alive there in that second half right away? What was the message there in the locker room? Yeah, I, t- I keep our messages in the locker room. You know, I, I spoke on it a little bit. At the end of the day, we were playing two teams. We were try- playing against ourselves. We were shooting ourselves in the foot, and we were playing against Winnipeg. And, you know, we just – we weren't playing well collectively at all in the first half. We didn't – we had a hard time stopping people. We didn't – you know, we got got the turnover. We didn't, we didn't score. We threw a pick. Um yeah, just painful first half. Four times, and you know that's all. That, that's that's CFL football. You got to get off the field, and we weren't able to do that. And that was able to, um, you know, you get the crowd going and their momentum starts going, and and we just uh, we didn't keep them off the board, and we didn't keep the ball long enough. We didn't sustain drives, and when you, you know, that's opposite of the complimentary football we like to play. You know, I thought we returned the ball decent, got some decent field mm-hmm. position. Um, again. The penalties were killing us. That was Coach O following the tough loss in Winnipeg. Obviously not happy about the result and looking 
to change that next week in Toronto. I think it's time now, though, I throw to my next guest, the one and only Coach Sal. Coach, thanks for joining me today, man. Well, you're more than welcome, Brad. I'm happy to be here. Now, Coach, it almost seemed like there was two different teams out there in Friday's game. There was the Ticats we saw in the first half and the Ticats we saw in the second half. Tell me a little bit about what you saw from the Ticats in that first half. Well, in the first half, Braden, I didn't think they were ready uh, to play a full ball game. Uh, it seemed to me, you know, there was a lot of slippage in the secondary, a lot of loose play at the line of scrimmage. Uh, offensively, you know, they moved the ball uh, effectively for one series. And then they they really kind of bogged down and uh, Calaris took advantage of them, went down the field, uh, put up 20 some points. And I think from that point on, uh, they were kind of uh, in disarray. And, and there was no way to, uh, to, to regain their footing until they went in at halftime. When they went in at halftime, they made some adjustments. They came out and played better in the third and fourth quarter, but that's not good enough. Now, in your experience as a coach, when your team goes down maybe so much at, a, at halftime, what would you say to your team heading into a second half maybe to try and rejuvenate them? Well, you tell them that this is not acceptable. We're paying you guys to play, and we're paying you to play well. And you did not play well. You took a bunch of foolish penalties. You didn't uh, address the the answer to what is on everybody's mind is turnovers. You turned the ball over. You gave them opportunities. You couldn't get them off the field on, on second down. So all in all, if you want to play this game and play with a Tiger Cat uniform, you better go out this half and play better. Going to the second half, it feels like that turning point was was when Flowers Lloyd had that block and then Omar Bayless gets the touchdown. Did you notice that that kind of switch gears for the Tiger Cats? Well, it's hard to say, Braden. As we always say, there's only four or five plays in a ball game that are going to make the difference in the ball game. And, and the fact that the uh, the cats were uh, assembling themselves in such a way that they they could uh, move to the end zone, et cetera. But but let's be realistic. You know, special teams provided one touchdown, a fumble recovery, scoop and and score uh, provided another touchdown. At the same time, the Cats gave away 17 points in turnovers. You can't do that. When you're playing against a team like Winnipeg is, when you know they're a good football team, the first thing you want to do as an offense is shorten the game. That means running the football. Well, they started out okay running the ball. They ran it six times in the first half. They had one fumble in, in that uh, series of runs. But for the total ball game, they only ran the ball 11 times. If, if you're not hitting your explosive plays downfield, the big long throws downfield, you've got to shorten the game with your run game. And, and I thought they got away from that absolutely uh, in the second half even. And, and Butler's a, a good enough back that you can lean on him mm -hmm. and, and get some good runs out of him. And now Bo Levi Mitchell, he makes that debut. What did you see from Bo in his first start as a tie cat? Well, I expected more, but at the same time, you know, maybe we go back to this, Braden. They didn't play a lot in the preseason games. Mm -hmm. Maybe that was a mistake with a new team, with a new group of players. Maybe it was a mistake. I, I can't say that it was, but perhaps if they had had uh, a half a play, a, a two quarters of play instead of a series of plays, uh, maybe he would have been a, a lot sharper. But I know this, Bo Levi Mitchell is a good quarterback, and he will bounce back, and he will get better. But that offensive line up in front of him, those two tackles especially, had better give him some better protection. And with a team, maybe a, a new team with so many new pieces like the Ticats have, is, is it difficult for, for a group to adjust to each other when you have so many new people coming into an organization? Well, it's obviously a different way of looking at it, but every year is a different year. Every year is a new team. There's never been an opportunity to have the exact same number of people in the same positions back. So you, you have to make those adjustments. They had time in training camp to do that. I think they both are, or will look out for each other. That doesn't, that doesn't bother me at all. But they didn't play as a team, uh, as far as I could see. Now there were some good players. I thought Thurman at the middle linebacker played an exceptional ball game, mm -hmm. uh, 10 tackles in the ball game. 
Uh, Jacare Davis was basically absent from the ball game. He's a highly paid uh, player. You expect more from him. Uh, Figueroa on the left side, he's got to play better, and I think he will. But, uh, you know, overall, uh, when you look at the entire team, uh, Adelike had a chance for an interception in the end zone and drops yeah. the football. These, these, these things tell me that they just weren't on their game. They weren't locked in. Now, going back to Jameer Thurman, he, he had quite the game. What what did you like the most about what you saw from him? It seemed like he was one of those shining shining stars for the Ticats. Well, he goes sideline to sideline. He, he can make the plays uh, in the interior. He can make the plays on the outside. He can drop deep in coverage. He can, he can play the short coverage. You put he and, and Edwards and uh, Simone Lawrence together, on paper, that's probably as good a linebacking core as there is in, in the entire league. Mm-hmm. So you start on the road against Winnipeg and you have Toronto. Can you say that maybe the schedule might have something to do with maybe the slow start playing a team like Winnipeg? It's been in three straight great cups. It, it can't be easy to start off a season against them. Whatever you're given as a schedule is what you play. And, and you cannot use that as an excuse. Yes, it's tough because they had to travel. Saskatchewan had to travel to Edmonton. They won the ball game. BC mm-hmm. had to travel uh, to Calgary, they won the ball game, so you can't make that as an excuse. Now, the fact that Toronto got a bye in in the first week bothers me, because yeah. it's always been the habit of the team, the uh, league, to play the first game the two participants in the previous Grey Cup, and they yeah. didn't do that. Then they get you know, so Hamlin goes into Winnipeg. They don't have any film on Winnipeg at all. Winnipeg didn't have any film on Hamilton, but now Toronto, we come up to Toronto on Sunday, Toronto's got the advantage because they have a tape. And mm-hmm. then you move on one week further from that. And Montreal has got a bye week before they play the Ticats. So they end up with two tapes yeah. uh, versus one. So it may be unfair, but it's the cards you're dealt. You play that hand. Now, going back to the offense, two receivers, it seemed like they started to click with Bo a little bit in the second half uh, is Tim White and Duke Williams. What did you see from them in the second half with Bo that maybe switched from the first half with Bo? Well, you know, in the first half, they weren't on the same page. And, and some of it was the receiving core. Uh, I can remember one time when, when Duke went straight up the field when he should have been bending inside. The ball goes inside, nearly intercepted. Uh, on another time, uh, we saw White clearly in the open going yep. uh, from right to left on the post route. The ball was thrown behind him. So that becomes Bo's problem that, that he didn't get the ball to him. Uh, there were some overthrows, there were some underthrows. So all in all, you know, I, I think the receiving core is solid. I, I have no problems with the receiving core. Uh, yes, you're going to go through uh, White as your number one receiver. But you can't go every time to White. You've got to spread that ball around. Yeah, no, absolutely. It seemed like there was a few chances there in the first half, at least where where he could have been gone for a touchdown or at least for some major yards. Overall, this team, uh, obviously, it's a it's a difficult first week. They they get the loss. What was your overall impression of the team in in week one? Well, I think disappointment would be would be a, a word that I would use. Uh, they're disappointed. Uh, in themselves, I know they are. They're athletes. They they will uh, have enough pride that they'll come back against Toronto and, and play very well. I believe in that ball game, but they have to look at that film and they have to be introspective. They have to look at themselves in the mirror and say, "Did I play as well as I can play?" And the answer is no. I didn't see anyone in there other than maybe one or two uh, guys that we talked about who played an exceptional ball game. So. Uh, it's up to them now as a team, and, and I'm sure the coaches will really look at this tape and really break this tape down and maybe maybe make some changes in the way they call some plays. Maybe some defensive schemes uh, where Jagger Davis is dropping off the line of scrimmage instead of trying to pressure the quarterback. If your number one rusher is not going after the quarterback, you're losing a whole a whole bunch, I think. And now Toronto in our next game, they had the bye week last week. How do you think that this Ticats team matches up in that week two matchup with uh, Toronto? Well, I think they match up very well. 
and, and a lot of it will be because they've played a full ball game now and they know where their shortcomings are, they can adjust themselves and, and get themselves in a position to where they can play a good ball game. Yes, they're going to have to travel again uh, to play this ball game, but that's a short trip. And, and we've always been good against Toronto anyway. So, you know, uh, don't let this game define your team. This this game was a game in which you didn't play well. Go back now to Toronto, play very well against Toronto, and get yourself into the Eastern uh, Division. Well, Coach, I'll leave it at that. Thank you for joining me. It was uh, great to have you on. Great to get your insight on the game, and I look forward to talking to you very soon. Well, Braden, it's wonderful. Thank you very much, and I look forward to talking with you.